So the first uh, thing I'll need a motion to approve the minutes from April 10th of 2018. So move second. Mr. Perkin? Yes. Hi. And Dave, if you want okay. to Okay. I got a, I got a full list, so sit back, relax. And I'll try and get through this as quickly as possible. Uh, on April 19th for the County Home, I approved hiring Rebecca Avenish to the position of part-time clerk number 1503-1 to be effective April 25th. 2018, so at the rate of $11.81 per hour for the one year probationary period. This offers <coughs> empo of employment is contingent upon successful completion of the required pre employment conditions. Uh, also, approved re uh, hiring um, Rebecca Evanish also for the position of part time attendant. So she's going to be part time clerk and she's going to be part time attendant. Uh, that job number is 1504 1 to be effective April 25th at the same rate, 1181 with the same contingent uh, offer of employment. Also for the county home, accepted the resignation of Mindy Hudick, full-time attendant, to be effective April 26, 2018. And then yesterday for the county home, we had to amend those motions I just described uh, to change the start date for Rebecca Avenish to be effective April 23rd for both the part-time cook and part-time attendant positions. Also for the county home, accepted the resignation of Sandra Patton, part-time attendant number 1504-1 to be effective April 30th, 2018, and grant permission to advertise for the position of full-time attendant number 1504. This position will remain posted until, <coughs> until filled. And grant permission to increase the current posting for part-time attendant 1504-1 from one to two positions. These positions will remain posted until, until filled. For transit, uh, I also I accepted the resignation of Melissa Cantrell, part-time driver, 2210-1 to be effective April 27, 2018. She wrote a very nice thank you letter for, uh, for her being here. And also for the Department of Development, Community Economic, approved and executed the Office of Housing and Community Partnerships RLF grant slash loan review report form for the proposed revolving loan fund of Great Lakes Growers for the purchase of machinery and equipment in the amount of $215,000. So I'm just, I was executing the report for them, not the loan itself. And finally, for this office, I approved and executed the agreement with Chardon Rotary for the use of the parking lot at East Park, Park Street, also known as the Pit, for a fundraiser during the Maple Festival beginning after 5 p.m. on April 27, 2018, April 28th. 2018, April 29th, 2018. Let's report. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <coughs> so the financials today um, include a cash transfer from the commissioner's office to the Department of Development, Community Economic, to increase funds for the transfer of a county employee. Um, encumbrances include an encumbrance from the commissioner's office to Corsa for the 2018-2019 insurance renewal. A then and now from JFS for family and community services for expenses incurred in December of 2017. A travel request for maintenance for the Ohio Public Facilities Conference and Trade Show. A travel request from the Recorder's Office for the Ohio Recorders Association Summer Conference. A travel request from the Trevor's Treasurer's Office for the County Treasurer's Association 2018 Spring Conference and an encumbrance from water resources to Fiore's Group LLC for lawn maintenance for 2018-2019. Among the vouchers are 11,182.50 to McGlinchey Stafford for special prosecutor services rendered during March of 2018. 17,417 from JFS for Preston Ford for the purchase of a 2018 Ford Fusion. 143,937.25 from Juvenile Court for the second quarter share of the Juvenile Detention Center's operating costs. $50,000 for maintenance to USPS for postage in the county's mailing machine. Mm -hmm. And finally, 28,123.01 from Water Resources to Jack Gibson Construction for the final payment on the Russell Park Wastewater Treatment Plant Improvements Project. Yeah, that, that, uh the postage, that's uh, our typically we're spending well in excess of $200,000 a year on, on postage. So that's just mm -hmm. a lot of postage. Actually, Which is allocated, it's allocated to all the departments. Yeah. Glenn does a very uh, a very detailed, maybe you'd like to come and do a, like a two-hour presentation on postage. You know? <laughs> <laughs> 
are you going to sit down? I would need a couple, at least another hour. Okay. <laughs> we'll set up the PowerPoint. Would it be okay. appropriate to categorize that as maintenance, though? Postage? Well, because they uh, the um, maintenance operator department. up at the run there operates yeah. it, yeah, so they kind of put that underneath maintenance. So it's kind of the all encompassing department that a lot of the other departments utilize in some way, shape, or form. So, mm -hmm. but everybody's using the posters, right? Correct, yeah. Okay. And I guess it's good because it's kind of a complicated piece of machinery, so it's good to have one person or two people in this case that are trained on how to use it and operate it. And yeah, they we keep track of, they have like a code for each department that right. they put in. So. Yeah, I mean, we've talked to other counties where it's kind of self-service, but then you're depending on people putting the right postage in and not messing the machine up and all that, so it's, it's probably better to have a little more control, so we are spending that kind of money. Yeah, um, I think last week or the week before, we, we had discussed um, the special prosecutor uh, charges mm -hmm. and coming up with a tally of uh, where we're at today. I do have um, I do have figures for both uh, Skoda Minotti, mm -hmm. which was the forensic accounting firm, and also McGlinchey Stafford, which is the special prosecutor. Uh, so far for Skoda Minotti, we've only gotten basically one invoice uh, that was for December and January, and that uh, totaled about fifty thousand three twenty five sixty. And uh, we spoke with uh, the prosecutor's office, and they said he does have a, a rather large uh, invoice that he's still waiting for to send to us. From, so, from McGlinchey or from? From Skoda or not. The forensic yeah. account. Okay. Okay. Um, McGlinchey Stafford, the special prosecutor, we've paid uh, a few bills from him now, the total of $56,025.30. That's and, total today? Uh, correct. Including this uh, 11,000, yeah. 11, yeah. yes. Yeah. And he, the prosecutor indicated that this one should be winding down. Uh, maybe he speculated uh, loosely uh, maybe another thousand dollars or so as um, he wants to, to have some interviews, uh, you know, to share some information and stuff. So, okay, because that's going to be us. important moving forward in um, uh, rectifying those costs and trying to go after recouping that Correct, yeah. loss and that's part of the loss in my eyes so mm -hmm. that'll be a part of the discussion moving forward if there's going to be any future litigation against anyone going against you know trying to recoup that exactly so I appreciate you keeping track and keeping me in the loop on that not a problem the commissioner's office has requested for Sixty itemizing the financials for the meeting of April twenty fourth, two thousand and eighteen. Second. Special Yep. Yes. Hi. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Avery. Here from the library. That's what I was looking at. I don't see anybody. So we're gonna skip this. We're not gonna just rubber stamp this thing. So. Um, so we've got uh, number six, County Engineer's Office. Hello. Morning. Morning. Morning, Frank. <clears throat> Item six on the agenda is in reference to the asphalt resurfacing of sections A through C of Clare and Troy Road. We had a bid, op a bid on uh, opening on April 11th. Five bidders. Um, the apparent will bidder at the time submitted an incomplete bid. Um, therefore, the county engineer's office is recommending the board award the bid to Carvel Paving Company um, in the amount of $448,401.25. As they represented the lowest and best bid. Okay. The county engineer's office is requesting the board award the bid to Carvel Paving Company for the asphalt resurfacing of Clover Troy Road CH3 sections A through C in Bird Township in the amount of $448,401.25 as they represented the lowest and best bid. Second. Can we the opportunity to speak? Uh, sure. Could you state your name? Yeah, absolutely. I apologize. Um, I talked to, to Ms. Blair before, I just didn't want to interrupt. So my name is Ian Frank, I represent Ronyak Paving Inc. With me here is Sean Peterson, who is the president of, of Ronyak, and who, as you just heard, was the apparent low bidder. We sent a letter yesterday to Mr. Boris, as well as a copy to uh, Mr. Yanka at ODOT, regarding the issues on the rejection of Ronyak's bid. If I could just have the, the commissioners 
patients for maybe two minutes and, and give you a, a summary. I'm not sure if you've seen that before, uh, but the basis for the rejection of Ronyak's bid, as Mr. Gorsuch said, as being incomplete is the absence of a form called a DBE utilization form, plan form. DBE is disadvantaged business enterprise. Each public project, as you probably know, has a stated goal of participation of disadvantaged business enterprises. This one had a 6% goal. Um, there is a specific form, it's about a one or two page form, that is completed electronically, uh, required by the department, and submitted. Um, Ronyak Paving did not include that form. However, all of the information that would have been in that form, the identity of disadvantaged business enterprises they intended to use, uh, the nature of their work, subcontractor, supplier, trucking, uh, the amount uh, that they represented on a percentage basis as it, represents, as it relates to whether they achieved or exceeded the goal, um, and the aggregate amount was all in their bid forms. So all the substantive information was already included in the bid. What that means is, is that uh, the county and the department had the ability to assess whether or not Ronyak exceeded or, or met the goal. That's the purpose of the DBE form. Uh, in fact, Ronyak exceeded, the, the next bid is obviously a similar issue, uh, but exceeded the goal by, I think, more than double on both of these projects that are number six and number seven. I think we had 16% participation on one. 12% on another. Uh, we also saved the county and the department and both of these townships on these projects about fifty or sixty thousand uh, dollars by awarding to Ronyak paving. The reason this is important uh, is because obviously uh, you gentlemen are stewards of the public dollar um, and what the law in Ohio says is that it's very important um, when determining whether a bidder is non-responsive that um, errors and, and uh, irregularities that are not of a material or significant nature are not regarded to throw out that bidder's bid. And so the information that I shared in my letter yesterday is that the law in Ohio is pretty well established. In order to render a bid non-responsive, a deviation or inconsistency with the bid specs has to be significant, has to affect price, and has to give them an unfair competitive advantage. Here that didn't occur. Uh, in fact, uh, the RTA had a situation in the early 90s exactly like this, and I shared that case uh, with, with the department and with uh, the engineer's office in which a DB participation form uh, was not included. That bidder was awarded, that bid was upheld because that deviation, again, was not material. The purpose here is to make sure we have DB participation. That's, that's the whole purpose of this program. It's the whole purpose of the forms. All that information was included in our bid. We exceeded it. In fact, we exceeded uh, the amount, I believe. We've taken a look at the other bids submitted by the two second bidders on these jobs, and I think we've exceeded the numbers that they've included for utilization. Uh, we saved the county. We saved the department money. Uh, these are non-substantive deviations. Um, they should not render our bid non-responsive. We asked the commissioners to decline the engineer's recommendation and to make an award to the, the lowest uh, responsive and responsible bidder, which is Ron Yank Paving Inc. And I won't get up to, to bother you gentlemen again on the number seven, but my, my positions and the facts are essentially the same. Thanks. I appreciate your time. Well, thank you. Hmm. Um. Well, do we have a motion on the on the table? Is there anything that uh, either of you wanted to say? Sure. Um, to add input to what you're looking for, we have um, contacted our, our prosecuting attorney on this, and they have recommended, according to number six and number seven, uh, with regard to the resurfacing of and Troy, um, to award to Carbo Paving, and then with regard to um, County Highway 4, to award to Sugar and Valley Paving. Yeah, this is a, it's a, you know, it's, a, it's an unfortunate situation, but this red tape is, a, it's a, always a, takes a wonder in our system of these, uh, you know, checks and balances and then 
it's unfortunate sometimes these disqualifications do take place because it does well, quit the, the, the process sometimes is always a is a um, hindrance to, to, to moving forward in more, many ways and not just in this but in other things too so um, it would be something I'd like to revisit with the county engineer. I mean, generally, we take the county engineer's recommendations on these things because we're not road guys and we're not following the process. We don't know the process. If our prosecutor and our engineer brings us a recommendation, we generally don't have the expertise to deny it, although questions were raised to me, and, I, and I'd like to look into it a little further, personally. And so if we can sit down and talk about it, I'd like to do that. But um, it, it is... Um, Interesting situation. I had a motion and a second, so um, we can fail to vote and then do your decision or whether you want to roll, move forward with your roll, vote on as is, or if you want to table them until next week. Let, let me just ask you is there a timing issue here? I mean, we put these on the agenda so that we can get the vote on today. Um, and I guess the other question is, did the rest of the firms that were involved a bit on this, they submitted this DBA form, all of them? The utilization form? <laughs> yeah. Uh, for the ones that we're considering here for um, the award, yes. And they have complied with the requirements. And you didn't the receive one from Ryaniac? This is what we received from the Ohio Department of Transportation. They indicated that they did not receive that form from Rodney Paving. Okay. However, uh, the cases of both of these um, ones that we're choosing to award to, um, they, ODOT has recommended those forms are in place and we can proceed with that. Okay. We're getting our recommendation from the Ohio Department of Transportation here. Okay. And then making our lowest and best determination based on that. And the prosecutor's office has reviewed this. And, and they have this. reviewed all that and they've spoken to the <coughs> attorneys at ODOT as well. Okay. So I'll second that motion. Yes. Yes. Hi. Yeah. I do you want the information on the seven nerves? Sure. Um, the uh, item number seven is regarding the asphalt resurfacing of sections D through E of Auburn Road. Um, again, the apparent low submitted an incomplete bid. Um, therefore, the engineer's office is recommending the board award the project to Sugar and Valley Paving in the amount of $673,724.90 as they represented the lowest and best bid. Second. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Item, there's one more for me here. Item number eight um, is requesting the board release the uh, 33 reductions on all county and township roadways effective this coming April 30th. It's to believe that the frost is damage that would have occur is out of the road. So oh, released. Oh, yeah. We, so we were releasing the restriction of the 33. So. Okay. So. Hopefully, we won't need that for a while. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, you're doing that before the Maple, the maple Festival. Well, it's not actually released until after, yeah. though. Oh, okay, all right. Yeah. So the County Engineer's Office is requesting the board release the 33% maximum load limit reduction on all county highways and township roads to be effective April 3rd, 2018. Second. <coughs> yes. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Good day. Uh, what we want to do once we hire him 
get him involved with the process of hiring the other two so we make him feel part of the team and, and make him uh, be part of that process so we can hire two more. Good. That way, I'm not doing it. No. We're doing it as a team and get them more into it. So I think this would be a very, very good candidate. We had a couple of them. We went back and back and back and forth um, after many interviews. I think he would be a good fit all the way around for the county, and I think he'll be here for good. a long time. Where's, now, where's he coming from? Um, he's out of Middlefield. Good. Uh, he was doing um, a construction company, working for a construction company. So, oh. So this will be part of the your plan is to in-house yes. janitorial Correct. So on, so on. Yes. with the two that we have in place now. Right. And then uh, with him coming with us and hiring the other two. Right. So four. I had a discussion so. with um, um, our sheriff regarding a diff different subject, but it led yeah. back to the janitorial and the. Back in the old days, they used to be able to take you know prisoners and take them out and go pick up garbage along the roads and ditches and stuff but you got to meet certain qualifications to be able to be able to first you got to volunteer to do that and then you know clear background check and all these certain things and he said that nobody can pass that background check because of the drug issue yeah. you know that's the yeah. biggest one he said about 90 percent of his inmates are drug related right. in some way or another <laughs> um same thing with the, with the janitorial service yeah. when they were helping they were doing the doing, side, and right? Everything. They He's, don't qualify for the background right. check, so, so it's a predicament for sure. Mm -hmm. But um, I, I think that you're on the right path here. You know, doing this in house, and you have the control of this, and you know, at the end of the day, it'll be a not only a safer thing, but a, right. we'll be able to control this, control and yeah. cross, and yeah, we'll start getting rid of some other things that we more or less contract out and try to get more in the house of doing this stuff. It's a, right. Hopefully it goes off good. Good. Uh, we really, like I said, we screened and, and talked of, went way above on this one because I think this is a very important part. It just doesn't work for me, but he's out there with other elected officials. You're right. Uh, I have to have that trust factor. Sure. With the prosecutor's office, with the sheriff. Mm -hmm. uh, so they, they don't come yelling at us. All yep. the way around. So good. You know, Wanted kind of did a small background check and seeing where he is, so we're not wasting totally of all the time. But once if this gets approved, then we're gonna really. And I don't foresee anything on this guy. So after talking to many, many people, and, uh, all the way around, I think he, he's our best. He didn't go. Okay. Good job. Thank Great. you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. The Maintenance Department is requesting the board approve hiring John Glover to the position of lead custodian number 1916 to be effective May 13, 2018, at the rate of $15.45 per hour with a one year probationary period. This offer of employment is contingent upon the successful completion of the required pre employment conditions. Is Second. Bishop Thickle? Yep. Mr. Lennon? Yes. Mr. Spillard? Thank you. No, thank you. Good day. Good day. Good morning. Who's this person? Uh, short timer. We went back and forth quite a bit on um, what we wanted to do to replace my function, and this is what we came up with. So we're asking you to approve the creation, title, and job description for the position of human resources administrator and give us permission to advertise for that. Yeah, it feels weird. It's okay. Okay. Second. Mr. Hegel? Yep. Mr. Yes. Mr. Spiller? Right. I'll be for 10 and 11 mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Do you want to talk about number 12? Do sure. Do you do it? Um, no, you can do it. It was just kind of, this was your, this was your idea to move things forward. Well, this was another thing where we went, it. as you know, you guys had a discussion with the directors and then we also had a discussion, with, a pretty lengthy discussion at the last director's meeting about what to do about the remaining 1% that you appropriated because we knew and we kept bringing it back around again and again that you guys were looking for a performance-based type of path forward. And so um, 
at the end of the day, we ended up going with what we already had in the policy manual because it is performance-based, though I will be bringing you an updated policy once we're through this process. Um, also based on a lot of input from the department heads, we're going to change the evaluation form and um, change how we'll ask for the performance to base increases that you guys were looking for. So Dave had Ad Adrian do an analysis of how much each department would have to, um, to award based on what our policy says, which is it's a one-step increase for people who have done extremely well. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think Dave's idea was to distribute it till you run out. So um, that's what we're recommending. Obviously, if you guys want to just give the department heads discretion to do whatever they want with that bucket of money, you can do that too. There are some that have indicated they would like to just give it up to everybody on a bonus basis rather than a step increase. But um, our policy allows for step increases for every 10 employees. So okay. that was what we recommended. Because that's what's in the policy right now. And, and they do have in place already performance reviews? They're almost yes. all done. Okay. Yes, yeah. and they're not allowed to do it until the review is done. Okay. And, and the review has a new, there's a numeric component to it. So at the end, you have you accumulate points. Okay. So you can look, you know, just go down for a given department and say, okay, this is my high score. In a big department, you say, okay, this is my high score, this is my second highest. You say, okay, a step increase for those people is going to take X amount of dollars. Is there enough money in that bucket from the 1% to cover that? And if so, then that would be the recommendation. We'd come back to you guys and say, this is what we're recommending based on performance okay. reviews and based on the amount of money that's available. Within the policy, are, are we uh, providing for uh, people uh, one-time bonuses versus a permanent liability? Right and so that, I'd like to see that first. That is coming. We'll so, need to change the I mean, policy. It, right now, if you do a, a permanent increase, it's a permanent liability forever and ever. We're, if you have an opportunity to do a spot bonus kind of a scenario, um, it, I think it has a better impact in many cases. Um, it gives the managers the flexibility to make some decisions on how they run, uh, manage their departments and so forth, and I like that idea. So, yeah, I mean, I, I think we're on definitely on the right track, you know, as far as this goes. And, you know, we have to have a, a rhyme or a reason to increases you know it means you're you've done something more you've taken on more responsibility you know it's not just because a calendar year has gone by right and our policy yeah. has always allowed for that right right um, so i think we're on the right track i think this is the first time that really since i've been here where management has said to everybody get them done by this date because this is what we're doing yeah. and here's this bucket of, mo of money that's available and you know compensation is such an emotional issue People say, well, you're going to give it to some and not to others. That's not fair. Well, it's not fair if you have someone that consistently performs in a higher level and doesn't get any more yeah. than the people around them that may be just putting in their time yeah. and not going above and beyond. You guys want to reward people going I've always said, you, you know, the comment, you'll get accused of favoritism, and it's like, okay, I'm going to favor the ones that work hard. <laughs> you yeah. know, that's the way, yeah. you know, so. Right. But, uh, um no, I, again, you know, I think this is something that will take some time to probably feel out as far as those performance reviews and what they look like and what the um, credentials of it are. That's why we're changing. Yeah, well, she, yeah, yeah. We, we revised them. One, the, the the old performance review for the rank and file had like ten, 10 steps to it. It's just that you get. What's the difference between somebody getting an eight or a nine? It's so, mm -hmm. yeah. whereas yeah. what we had for directors and what we're moving toward, what we're recommending for everyone else is just one through five. Mm -hmm. So you keep it simply. You say, okay, three is fully acceptable. Mm -hmm. So you start out, if you're a decent employee, you're probably a three. If maybe you're falling short somewhere, maybe you only deserve a two on that. Mm -hmm. Now, if you want to try for a four or a five, what are the specific reasons? What are you doing specifically that makes you above average? Mm -hmm. And try to hold everyone to that standard. We also introduced an element into the form where we can, if a director chooses to, they can have the employee evaluate themselves first before they're evaluated by their supervisor. And there's um, plenty of room in there for narratives on both sides. So again, mm -hmm. if Good. you feel like you're a four or a five and you want to prove it, you have an opportunity. Here's what I did that I think makes me above a three. And that's and that's the process I've been doing the directors this week and hopefully I'll have them done at the end of the week. And that's they, they did a self analysis for self rating first and I sit down with them 
or I've rated them, and basically if they've given themselves a four and there's really nothing there, it's like, well, I need some, or you didn't put it in your evaluation, give me something specific. Mm -hmm. So I can put it in there to comment, this is why they're worth a four. So you're kind of holding people to a standard and say, three's okay, but that's kind of expected. You know, mm -hmm. if you think you're above average, tell me specifically where you are. What have you done? And once again, I think we need to be doing some training of directors, and directors need to be training supervisors yep. so everybody understands how to use the instrument in a way that's reasonably consistent. And when you say training, how, how would that uh, training be done? Would that be? I think we could do it at a director's meeting with a discussion. Okay. okay. But then it would be the director's responsibility to their, if they have supervisors that are evaluating people to then convey to them, okay. here's the new form, here's how it should be used. Three is where we start if the person is doing just fine. Okay. Part of the problem you have in a larger environment, like I'll pick on Jessica because she's here. <laughs> you know, you have, she, she's expressed to me Even if that I wasn't here, pick her on. supervisors, <laughs> some supervisors are harder graders than other supervisors. Right. And across the whole department, how do you how do you straighten it out so everybody has a, a consistent opportunity to be rated kind of along some common uh, criteria? Right. Yeah, you don't want it to be uh, you know subjective, I guess. But it, at the end of the day, it, it, it's some, it's some it's point. Well, it ability. is, but yeah. we're trying to add, you know, tell us specifically why you're yeah, above right. average. Give right. us an example, you know, where you've done something that clearly is not something we had a right to expect as part of your job. Good, thank you. I know it's it's taking a lot of time and effort, you know. Yeah, but it's kind of fun. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, we're going to be doing more. <laughs> if you want to be around to yeah, you have got this whole year to kind of work out a. This is a temporary uh, stopgap, right? So we're yes. going to be, we're, I'll be bringing you we're, we're looking at salary, generally speaking, yeah. And, yeah. and you know, at the end of the day, um, I think it's about performance. I mean, in the private sector, <coughs> uh, managers <coughs> who have different styles are graded. Those managers are graded on their performance. Their performance to be able to get more out of the folks that are working for them to to uh, benefit the company and so on and so forth. And too often in the public sector, we get away from that. It's just we want to be fair, and so we're giving money out just to be fair. Well, the, the taxpayers want performance. They don't necessarily do. care about fair. I, one of my so. jobs is to track evaluations from year to year, and since the actual line in the dirt was drawn and a date was mm -hmm. given, just so you know, I got one this week. That person had not been evaluated since 2003. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. And we, we I, you can ask Jerry, because I asked him, how many times have I said to these directors, do your evaluations? Yeah. And you <laughs> said. Every year, all the time. But there, wasn't, yeah. Yeah. there wasn't a deadline set before. There wasn't yes. a pot of money to say, this is going to go based on the yes. evaluation. So and now, Jerry sent that out and set the date. The other part the part of the issue in the past was the, the evaluations didn't mean anything. Right. So yeah. was, you know, right. because you had that where you know somebody gets a somebody gets a sixty, right. somebody gets a seventy, they're both still. Or they're all getting it. Yeah. yeah. Right. So really you know, was, I was I've said this and I you're probably getting sick of me saying it, but the engineer's office I think has done a good job at, you know, changing that environment there, put it you know, the there, I, I believe they do quarterly reviews and I think they even have peer reviews over there. It might be worthwhile talking to Joe about how they've uh, restructured that there but you know the, the, the employees there seem to be happier they're doing more with less and um, I think they're getting paid more the employees are getting paid more than they used to you know so um, you know he yeah, set up a pretty good environment there and yeah, I think and they all feel like it's fair and you know? that's and that's a great example of how to do it right the challenge that you guys have in, in, I've always said the commissioner's hiring authority is kind of like a multinational corporation. Mm -hmm. You got 11 departments all engaged in very different. different. You got the dog warden and you got transit. And you got department aging, you got water resources. They all, so there's not one cookie cutter size fits all to measure people. You got to right. tailor it to each department because mm -hmm. you're engaged in very different businesses. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Good. So, Thank you. So, do we have a motion on that? Second. Commissioner Pepper? Yep. Commissioner yes. Right. And Dave, maybe you wanted to talk about how you want to communicate this to the directors? Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I, I had a conversation with Ed Warsaw. He's on his way up here. We have a, you have an executive session, so okay. hoping by the time you finish with that, he'll be here and he can explain to you what his you know, items were on the set. On, uh, 
Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Mm -hmm. I guess my concern on that is, um, you know, I, I just, I struggle a little bit, and I, I, I just, what I was thinking about last, um, the last time when we approved that, um, that bond is, how do we go out to a taxpayer to say we want to get a bond for, you know, so many millions of dollars, but you really, I asked a couple questions, Tim asked a couple questions, Skip mm -hmm. asked a couple questions, mm -hmm. the reality is, is that how do you go out and ask for money? It would be like you go in to get a to get a, a, a construction loan for a house, and you have no idea what you're building. Mm -hmm. So how do you how do you build? How do you go for an amount that you really don't know? Right. And <laughs> no, that's a very good question. Yeah. And that's so that's where I just I'm to be quite honest. I think that there's a responsibility on us. And I listen. They put handcuffs on us pretty much when this thing first initially came to us, mm -hmm. that we have like very, z almost zero say. All we are is like a, uh, you know, as a uh, ceremonial, you know. The law, law requires you guys to sign off on something that's kind of a done deal right. at this point. Yeah. But, but I think that it's responsible for taxpayers to know that how do we, how do we put a rubber stamp on something that is not definitive of what the costs are? You know, right. and I can tell you this: a bank would never approve you going to a, to a bank and saying, no oh, give, "Give me a, twenty-four million, yeah, and give I, me twenty-four million, me. I'll figure out what the yeah, plan is going to be later." <laughs> well, I contrast really? I contrast this with what this board is trying to do with the feasibility study and agonizing over, right. "Are we doing the right thing?" and inviting the stakeholders in sure. and, and really trying to build a case. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, so so that's why I just I, I, I that's why I wanted to skip over this because. This is th these aren't small potatoes when you're talking fourteen million dollars, and, right. and and we have a responsibility to, 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 to at least get some get some questions answered and yep. to know what what route this is going. Yep. So, yep. Well, but even, what, even given the track record, I mean, we had five hundred dollars square foot <laughs> huge questions about how sure. this is all set up. So yeah, and it, it is. It's just very um, up and down, and it just it, so. But with that, um, it's um, it's 9:42, and uh, we're going to go into executive session with uh, Department on uh, Aging to uh, for the purpose of discussing discipline of a public employee. And uh, do we expect action today? Or I believe we do. We yeah. do. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, so it'll be uh, Jessica and uh, Linda. Are you coming in yep. too? Oh, so yep. and Dave and yep. your commissioners. We'll see you guys in just a little bit here. Motion. So a motion on that. So move. Second. Yep. So we've returned from executive session at uh, 9:55. And uh, if you want to read for action. The Department on Aging is requesting the board accept the disciplinary recommendation of the hearing officer Karen Decola to suspend for eight hours, one day, Thomas McGrew, transportation driver, for violation of Jack County Personnel Policy and Procedure Manual Section Three page 3.2 and point 3.3 3, and further approve and execute the order of removal, reduction, suspension, involuntary disciplinary dis disability separation form per ORC 124.344 for the suspension. There is that. There's three copies and you each need to sign each one. Okay. okay. Where your name <clears throat> is. Do I have a motion? So moved. Sorry. Second. Commissioner Pickle. Mm-hmm. Commissioner Ryan. Yes. Mr. Ryan. Hi. I know. So we're saying on the flying about this? Yes. In the box above. It's not my form, sorry. It's I know, and I've seen them very few, so it's like. I mean, it's Do I sign this one? Yes, yeah, you can sign in the box above the, your name. Right oh, that box, right? got it. Yeah. Okay, and then uh, Mr. Warsaw, with the library issue here, we didn't want to, you know, we just wanted to be able to at least get some uh, some clarification from you if you want to come on up. And sure. Morning. Hello. 
How are you? Well, a little frazzled. Yeah. <laughs> oh boy. Oh no. Well, we didn't know that this was on the agenda. Oh, we okay. were not prepared, or else we would have been here. Okay. Oh, okay. I was oh, that's on right. medical leave yesterday, and I got Dave this this know. morning. I'm still trying yeah. to. Get my head oh my gosh! Here, so okay. I got a call from Dave. Otherwise, I would. Yeah, have. well, this turned out Eckler, you know, it sets this up. You have a closing, which means the rate is locked in on Thursday. Sure. So it's this is a pretty big deal. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Fourteen million dollars. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Well, so this is on the agenda. Um, so, I guess if we could just back up to review what. We're doing here today. This is the um, bond certification. Is that right? Well, the first document. There's a document, signature, and no litigation certificate. So the commissioners are are certifying by law. They're the ones that have to do it. That there's no litigation going on involving the library. Correct. So that's, okay, it's important that they're comfortable that there is no litigation going on. And, and we have no idea whether yeah. it's litigation, no litigation. We're signing our names here, saying we, we know no that we don't know that. <laughs> we have no idea. So, yeah. Okay. We have no litigation. Um, are, have you reviewed this document? Just this, just now. Just now. Okay. We so let me ask you on. something. This, this is a little bit concerning because I read. Like, why I, wouldn't they? I, I don't understand. Like why wouldn't they? We'd be in contact with you a little bit more. That you guys are just kind of getting it now. Well, I signed the same things that you're signing. Okay. Yesterday, so I have seen it. Okay. But okay. I, I was not aware that it was also on the agenda. On the agenda. And, okay. yes. yeah. So so here's the kind of understand our position on this. I think that you know, kind of from the beginning, you know, in, in fairness to in fairness to us, we kind of get put in a position that, that we get singled out as almost like the people that are, you know, putting a rubber stamp on this approval, which you know, I think that on all three of us there was hesitation. It, to, to, from from the beginning, just because we have to deal with numbers on a daily basis, and know how hard money is to come by in these difficult times in our in our world today, um, but the, the the situation that we're facing, and, and and I think that you guys have to help us with this. We're the ones that are being faced with the challenges of questions after question, of you know even with. The last meeting, you had a couple of representatives that came in, and, and, and you know we're putting we're, we're putting the numbers out there, but the plan is not clear. And I, and I, I had made a comment earlier is that you know it would be like us going for a you know you or me or Chrissy or somebody going to a bank for a building loan for a new home, mm -hmm. and having no plan, you know, of what exactly is the pinpoint dollar. They'd want to know, okay, the roof's going to cost you this much, the parking, you know, your parking garage is going to cost you this much, and this is where it's at. But now what we're seeing is, is, is the ripple effect coming back to us saying, you're just basically saying, you know, we, we had a couple of questions that came in yesterday. I think Skip or Tim, had, or last, last, the last time was is, is that there's a change now in the square footage price that it may have gone down potentially a couple hundred thousand so or a couple hundred dollars a square foot mm -hmm. which when you look at that in the totality thing that's a lot of money so I guess you guys have to help us because we're getting the questions from the general public sure. to say what is actually the plan was it 14 million is it 24 million is it 50 million is it 100 million what is it that gives us because we have a duty to the public to sure. keep them informed because ultimately they're the ones paying the bill. Mm -hmm. They're trusting us to, to, to give them answers. I can't give them those answers, but I want to remain transparent through you guys to say what what is it and what direction are we going with this to be able to make this appealing for the public and, 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 and the biggest thing that we continuously get put into our faces is that we basically, this this passed by the skin of our teeth of 1%. So you basically have a big portion that says no, you have a big portion that says, or you have a big portion that says no, a big portion that says no, but with the ones we're hearing, and we say this in every election, don't complain if you didn't go to the polls, but that's the one, the, the big group that we're hearing for is, is if I thought it was pretty much in the bag of this not going through and I wish I would have voted. So those are the people that now are also coming to us saying, 
you got to watchdog this thing. So I'm just being full disclosure to you that this, these are the calls and questions that we're getting. So what? The, so this one of your questions was: Is it 24 million or 14 million? Is that we don't know because well, we've heard it both ways. It's 24 million. It's 24 million. Okay. If you remember, we did a, um, a bond anticipation notes last year for 10. So you'll have the 14 million this year. Okay. And I think we explained this plan to you at that time. We have the 14 million that's coming through in April. Okay. We'll have 10 million bond that's going to come through in May that will pay off those notes. So you're going to roll the notes into a bond. And how was right. the term on the bond? How many years is the bond? There are 30. Well, it, it, there's term bonds and there's also the. Um, I mean, do you see yeah, the where notes we're are like a year, but you're going to roll that right. now into, into, into a bond, a 30, and it's going to be like 30 years. years. Okay. Do you see where we're coming from? Like, if we're having a hard time, and I'm just being right. frank, understanding this, sure. let, right. let's just say the general public is understanding it less. And that's what sure. I've, remember what I said from the beginning, I don't have a problem with libraries. If this county wants to build the greatest library on the east side of the Mississippi, let's do it, if that's what the county wants. I've just said from the beginning, be forthright. Sure. I know I, I believe you, you truly are trying to be I'm not saying that right. but it's just from the get-go I feel like we're getting little tidbits of information where we really have no say in we're just kind of a sounding board that you're just gonna go do whatever it is the plan is you want right. to do but which it just it's been part, yeah which is how I, I mean, but that's you see how where we're law, coming from I, they totally yeah. see where yeah. you're I mean well, I'm not trying to jam you guys up or say don't do it or I mean I have my personal opinion sure. as a taxpayer what I think but you know the the public has spoken the vote is the vote um, but I think from this standpoint when I got this on my computer now I believe this was sent to our office from this brickler Bricker and Eckler. yeah maybe a few days ago but I'm just reading it as of last night and I'll be I, I mean I, I hit the brakes right away when I started reading this last night saying well, wait a second what so maybe you can explain to us the signature litigation certificate and then like like Ralph said maybe you can help us mm -hmm. in being more clear with your vision because um, I feel like we do kind of have the cart before the horse it's almost like if you were to go to if I was go to a bank as a business person and say I need 14 million trust me okay just trust me it's going to be what it is when it's all done they're going to laugh me right out of the room I have to come to them with a case built specifically and this is what we're right in the middle of right now in the county is doing a feasibility study to, to find our needs and then to find different options recommendations on what we can afford to then go forward with um, not just a lump sum to then go you know mold out of clay what we want you know that's not and we did that. We did, I, exactly. Well, yeah, you I mean, we did it. I think you did to a point. I think nope, it did we, to a point. I, did. It, it was not. It was not very drilled down. I mean, if you're going to say to me that your five hundred dollars a square foot is drilled down, I didn't say it was Well, that was in your plans, so though. That they, was the plans. You know, now you're saying it's not. No, but, I mean, I, no. We talked about this last time. Yeah, at all. yeah. I'm absolutely not. I mean, I I don't know if I got to dig up the minutes or whatever. No, but it was five hundred. Yeah, we talked about this last you know couple weeks ago that the five hundred was. Total cost, total oh, cost, total project okay. cost. Total project cost. If you're talking construction costs, okay. then it's lower. Okay. Renovations, but when you saw that expensive. that original plan, that had furniture, it had you know everything was in that. Plan. I see. Okay, maybe I just misunderstood. So we're doing a 30-year loan and furniture. Is that no, what you're saying? No, I mean, that, no, that's what that's you what just I said to me. No, so it's I, everything, and we're doing no, $500. No, I said the $500 included everything. Okay. The $500 per square foot included everything. I mean, we want to help you succeed in this at this point, and I think, you know, my feeling, and I think the, speaking for the other two, is just it needs to be clear as to what our plan is. Now, this thing, I don't understand it, and I'm not going to sign it until I understand it. The so litigation. your job is to under, make sure. me understand it. So are we talking about the litigation, litigation yes. part? Yes, right? so let's work so, on that. All right. So what I'm reading is that you are signing saying that there is no pending or threatened litigation that, that is going to um, keep the county from collecting the tax that's going to pay for that. Okay. So that to me, that's <coughs> county litigation. Is there any litigation in the county that's going to keep you from doing that? Yeah, for, for, the, the, for the, the library, litigation could be litigation against the library. 
I mean, there's some inconsistencies, and, and I'm not going to go into it unless you want me to right now, and things that I'm hearing you say right now as we're speaking. So I'm, 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 my mind is going, well, wait a minute. You say one thing. But all that said, this litigation says, is there any litigation, period, county, Laura. library, whatever, right. because it all has to do with collecting the bond. And being, if there's a something that sure. holds up collecting those tax dollars, mm -hmm. whatever, and you can't pay back the bond, that's a problem. Right. Mm -hmm. and that's so a problem for all of us, no and it's a problem for us. So. That's going to prohibit the county from taking, from collecting the tax, and or the library from, us right. from paying. Okay. And so, so technically speaking, you guys could be okay. sued. You don't and know if this is a lawsuit. Or and so, could you? So. Yeah, it's true. And I signed it. But, Thank you. You know, I'm, but, I'm, I'm trusting your word. Any, that yeah. There's no litigation. And, and I don't know if there's anything. I mean, I don't know if we've done the due diligence. If we had our legal, as the prosecutor's office reviewed this yes. Yes. on your right. behalf. I yeah. suggested to add maybe that they call their bond yeah. counsel. Do you have because typically, Becky, typically, Becky, Becky, can I put you on speak? Can you are you guys okay sure, with sure, sure. asking questions to Becky Prince or our legal counsel? Your your legal Rick counsel. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, okay sure. I'm going to put you on speakerphone. Does she know where we're at? I'm. At, yeah, she does. Uh, okay. You're on. Is, is our prosecutor group in? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Right. She actually made changes. They're having so trouble okay. with the signing the no signature and no litigation certificate of the county because they don't, they wouldn't know if we had any pending litigation. Um, the county is to act as agent for the library under statute. And Elisa, have you shared a copy of your signed? And no litigation. I did. I did not. I told them that I signed that. However, I didn't know that this was on the agenda today, so I was not prepared. We came at the last minute. Oh, okay. Okay. If if that would give them comfort, we can um, get them to forward that to them. Okay, that would be helpful. Yeah, and I'm just trying to, I am not the technical article. Let me ask you real quick, um, did, so Laura reviewed this? Yes, actually, Laura actually talked to Rebecca yesterday because okay. she had some questions on the closing certificate. She actually asked for the closing documentation and the 97 pages were sent to Laura. Okay. She went through them. Um, Was I, that reviewed by our bond council as well? She also talked to um, uh, Katie Roman, Romanchuk from um, Squire Patton Boggs. Um, about some of the changes that she um, was looking at. She requested that an entire paragraph be removed from the closing certificate that the prosecutor signed. Um, that was agreed to and removed. Um, the general certificate um, listed the library and was changed to reflect the county mm -hmm. um, instead of the library for our copy of the documents that we need to sign right. and there were some minor um, spelling errors that she also had okay. corrected. So, so, so let me ask you this since you've got your counsel on and, um, I've actually been approached by certain citizens and I won't share the name right now who wanted to put a petition together nullifying this levy and so they asked me if it was possible I said hey, look I'm not an attorney go talk to the Secretary of State I don't really know but I know that there's some people who really don't like this, and they were looking for reasons or ways to undo it. And, and, and you're asking me to sign a document um, saying I'm, I'm not aware of any issues and so on and so forth. And so, I mean, they've not followed through to the best of my knowledge. I've not seen them do anything yeah. with it, but they've explored it. And so we don't know whether any, there's anybody out there planning on or in reality seeking anything, right? Well, as of today, well, there's nothing. Well, what I, what I can tell you, and I don't know if uh, Laura Lachapelle's there no, at the meeting, um, or if you want to get your uh, bond counsel on the phone, what I can tell you is there's no authority in Ohio law to recall or repeal a bond issue. Okay, okay. Well, I mean, they, they, they thought it was serious enough that they, they would ask me the question, although I wouldn't know the answer to it because I'm not an attorney. But um, and I don't know what else is in their mind. Obviously. 
So, I mean, if nothing's happened so far, it's not likely anything will. They're probably just kicking the tires. But um, it's, yeah, I mean, that's just hypothetical at this mm -hmm. point. So let's just get down to business here. I mean, explain to us what we're doing here today. So, so our signature on this is saying that we just don't, to the best of our knowledge, know of anything. So let's say a lawsuit happens after the fact. At the time you said there was. When we signed this, we didn't Okay. Know. Yeah, it's as of um, the closing date, and again, to give the commissioners um, comfort, there is a provision in 133.18 that makes um, bond election proceedings incontestable. Again, I don't know if Laura's in the room. She's not. Um, she's not here. She's not here. Okay. But just as um, a reference, um, I'm kind of buried in the code. I can follow up with her if she wants to check her first. It's in 133.18g um, when the contest period has passed, um, the election and including all the proceedings for the election is incontestable. And the contest period is that 15-day period after you get the certificate right. of resolve, and that is long since passed. And I can follow up with Laura with this okay. um, provision citation. The library yeah. signed a parallel signature and no litigation certificate. Um, I Do we can have a... get off the phone. I can scan that too. Yeah, I was going to say we probably need a copy of that too. So we both sign it. So the commissioners and then the library board signs that. Yeah. Is that correct? Okay. Because it, yeah. And I think they're supposed to sign this one too. President of board, library yeah. trustees, fiscal officer board, commissioners. Yeah. Certificate of often. Okay. is incontestable other than in a contest filed under section 3515.09 revised code in which the plaintiff prevails. And that, that would be that's a reference to the election. And then there's a second part to this to the Jug County Public Library Library Improvement Bond Series 2018A. Yes, that's the actual bond. That's the bond. Yes. Okay. Yeah, and that's it, Yeah, I mean, this is all kind of, you know, we're, we're getting little bits of information. We haven't been fully informed. I, I mean, we, you know, this is all kind of new to me, some of this stuff. So, you know, I'm just, I'm well, trusting I you. you. Got, I hope you got the best news. They got a great bond rating, which really reflects well on the county. Yeah, well, Geauga County does, yeah. The, the, the library never um, uh, let us know what their Moody's rating came back as. It was never. It was never discussed. Very good. Good Well, that's yeah. It was never. We don't. We've never heard. They these. just said that they had received their Moody's reading, but they never stated what it was. Because uh, so so let me. Uh, this is uh, Ralph, one of the commissioners here. Um, you know, we're. We're we're the kind of the concern is is that we're just getting a lot of questions as far as you know questions and calls from people um, and 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 at the end of the day we, we, we need to just kind of get ahead of this because um, the, the, the calls and the comments that we have been getting is is that basically we're rubber stamping this and not not asking the, 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 the point blank questions just because they feel that though I, I don't I don't necessarily think that the the 
the goal and the, uh, the, the the position of where the library board and, and library is, is standing has changed, but it's just there's been questions sometimes that we have asked and we had one answer and then when we asked it again, it was different, not because the, the answer necessarily changed, but I think that the way that it was stated might have changed. And it's just caused a little bit of a a little bit of a ripple effect, and, and I, I think that the reality is is we haven't had something, you know, this nominal come up uh, since the safety center, and I think that it's um, it's a situation where, um, you know, the, the people are trying to get their arms around this because the safety center actually, you know, has a jail to try to protect people, and this has a position of educating kids and growing kids, and we get that. But the reality is, is the, the safety center we didn't put on a bond issue. We put that basically into our general fund that we paid paid that in a, in a yearly position. Um, so, you know, and the biggest thing was is, is that literally it, 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 it just passed. So now we're getting the pushback from that, you know, I would say normally the small majority, but in this case it's a, it's a fairly large push that people that didn't vote wish they would have voted since it passed and now they are basically pushing on us saying you got to ask the hard questions and my position with them is to say we should have gotten out to vote and we wouldn't be having this discussion so that's I guess the the uh, the end of the day you know it is what it is but I don't want to put myself and my fellow commissioners in a position that we are not being transparent and that we are not asking the questions and and that's why we you know appreciate you taking the call with us and and um, you know and, and, and being able to discuss this because I just you know there's it just the the, 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 the position that the public is out there is that they just are asking and demanding us to ask the questions We get it. Awful. We get it. We get it. I'm just saying, yeah, you know, there we're, we've had maybe three or four meetings with the library officials, and I'm just going to be blunt. I feel that this is highly unorganized right now. At least what I'm hearing from, maybe it's just in the way it's being presented, but I feel like this is unorganized right now, and I'll, I'm just going to say it. So don't don't think I'm trying to take shots at you. I'm just saying from my side of the table. I feel like this is there's a lot of uncertainty. Maybe maybe it's not. Maybe we're just not hearing it. But that's maybe my perception. That's my perception. Yeah. yeah. And, and well, it's not just his perception because we of the people that are out there that we're getting the calls back to. It's not just him feeling that way. It's oh, I no, mean it's we I mean it's that's the big thing that and that's why I just think that listen, this isn't political for us one way or another. We, we, we're kind of just the pawns in this. <laughs> you have to basically bring this to the public light, but the reality is is that everybody kind of feels the same sentiment that Tim is feeling, and I feel it, and I'm not speaking for Skip, but he probably feels a little bit of that too. Mm -hmm. And I just want to get ahead of this because, listen, at the end of the day, we, we want to support you to, 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 to do good for the people of this county. But what we don't want to do is, is we don't want to sell. We don't want to try to produce them a, a bill of goods that we don't have answers to clearly enough to be able. We realize our hands are cuffed in this, and 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 we're just a, a formal f formality. But we want to still be able to be responsible and accountable. That's all. I spoke. Well, briefly. let me get to um, what I promised, and should I send that? Yeah, that's fine, and then she will distribute it to all of us, yes. I, I spoke briefly to, to Laura LaChapelle, our counsel, and, and she counseled that you know, this document, the signature and uh, no litigation, it's based on your understanding as of, I think you said bond closing, you know, as of now. So no one's going to hold us to if something comes up that no one can be made aware of. It was also, as Christie's mentioned, it was reviewed by Squire Patton, our 
But I, you know, the issue you always face here is we, none of us does this a lot. Right. So you're, you jump into one of sure. these and, and it's kind of like a learning experience each time. But, yeah. but it, you know, these guys have to feel comfortable. That and I have no doubt, help. you know, you're going to build a fabulous library. I don't think that's the question. I think just making sure that people are informed to the fullest mm -hmm. and then um, in no way misled. And I'm not saying that you've misled anyone, but um, yeah, I mean... I, I think it's just maybe the, the communication of the plan. You know, we just, and I, again, you know, I, we're, we basically are a figurehead rubber stamp on this process where, where we have no legal um, authority to negate it or anything like that. And I'm not even trying to. I've just, you know, from the early on, what I've said early on is just being forthright. And I, I do have a feeling that it feels and this is probably new territory for all of you as well, but we're dealing with a lot of money here. This is not uh, some little, you sure. know, this is major, major money, and it's going to affect this county for 30-plus years, you know. So I, I just want to make sure we get this right before we go out asking for these type of dollars. <clears throat> but um, anyway, uh, enough Any other questions? pontificating here, but... Um, that's it for me. Okay. Okay. Well, um, Chrissy, I'll get this to you promptly here. Okay. Um, before okay. we hang up, before we hang up with Rebecca, can we just like maybe clarify the the, the process just so that like um, because it is done in two two different steps, and then we have to come back and revisit this again in May. Um, just to maybe we can have some kind of a clarification while we are on the phone with you that. Um, in April, they did the resolution in anticipation of the issuance of the of the, the notes for the bond um, that included the full 24 million, because that first 10 million is already bonded from last year. Today, they're doing the second half of the bonding process, which is just for the 14 million today, <laughs> um, and that is the signature loan litigation and the actual signing of the bond. Um, for the, in preparation of the closing on Thursday the 26th and then in May you will come back with the remaining 10 million to roll um, that from to, notes into the bond to let roll me, that from note into the full bond for the 24th let me million. ask you a question what I, it, you know if, if <coughs> let's say this thing were to um, hypothetically something was to go belly up I mean if, if the commissioners or the county aren't so important in this process who do you think they're going to come back to if, say, the, I mean, is this, what is, what's the role of the uh, county or the Jog County Commissioners in this anyway? Just for my own understanding. You, you Why do we have to even sign it? You are defined as statute as agent. Mm -hmm. The agent. And yeah. um, I mean, I should say, defined, you are mentioned in statute as no real definition of what that means. Okay. Because they are a county district library, the bonds are issued, if you note they're a top signature bad situation. certificate, they are bonds of the library. Okay. Yes. So is there any and liability so, to the to the county? Your role is, is I think somebody mentioned it, is ministerial. Okay. So there's no there's liability? There's Okay. Gonna, there would be liability, it would fall on the library. So it, okay. does it, it doesn't okay. impact on the county's debt limit? Or our no, rating? It's independent. And our rating? You don't have a bond rating, uh, so far as I know. Uh, yeah. um, the county? We haven't gone out for one since the last renewal of our own notes. We didn't go out for a bond Yeah, rating. we just paid off our debt, I thought. It was we paid right. off, so. Yeah. Yeah. But, no, uh, Councilor, yeah, look, look, Councilor, let me ask you this question. So let's say that the library, and I don't think it's going to happen. I think there's, there's a lot of fat in this uh, dollar amount. But let's say that something happens and, and there's a lawsuit. Because we're the agents, we could be a named um, party in that lawsuit because we signed off on all this stuff and so on and so forth. Is that not right, Councilor? I don't think you have any liability because they're not your boss. Okay. But since we're the agent, quote unquote, could we not be named in the lawsuit? You could be named, but you, 
get out of summary judgment because right. they're not your boss. Okay. All right. Good. As long as our prosecutor is comfortable with it, then. Okay. Well, thank you so much for for uh, taking the time to talk with us. Okay. No. Um, Christy, give me a few minutes, and I'll get right to you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Ms. Jones has a question. Bro. What would you like to say? I do have a question. I've heard the conversation. I understand there are two series of bonds, and uh, it has never been explained in any format. Uh, what bonds are issued with varying lengths of maturities and varying rates of interest depending on the risk, etc. And have any of you gentlemen seen anything like that with either set of, of uh, bonds? Well, this, this, I th I th there was a section here that yeah. talks about the interest and the interest there is, is on here is dependent upon the uh, the principal amount on maturity date, right? And it's it's a it's calculated based on a year long um, average, I believe it is, if I remember correctly. You know, okay. Based on uh, the three hundred sixty day year, twelve month rolling they, it's, it's very complicated you don't okay but are they all I interest. understand the average is 3.74 percent are they all 3.74 or I, I well think this I mean I think this you get a good point is you know I think just my suggestion from my my standpoint if I was sitting in your shoes Ed I would you know get this information out to the public so they are yeah. informed sure right I mean, that's all. And the other thing is, other municipal entities in this county have done the same work that you've done, and I am aware that um, uh, the elected officials have brought the council, the bond council, in. And the, uh, in one case, the attorney was from, you mentioned um, uh, Patton, Squire Patton and Boggs. That individual actually came to the public meeting and explained the procedure in the presence of the people who were attending. I know because we videoed it. And while it may not have been understandable to everybody, at least it was transparent mm -hmm. and it provided a great deal of comfort and security knowing that it was official and upfront. That's right. And I think that's the that's the goal and the point of all this is we really Jog County, including the libraries and everybody, this should be a group effort, you know, and not working in silos or in vacuums or, you know, and I know that it's it's easy to get into your empire or your world and that's all you think about, but there is a forest and there's not just one tree, you know, and I feel that um, these decisions, although they are yours, should be, at the same time, they are in, on behalf of the taxpayers, right? And um, well, working with them like they are your customer, you know, I guess the way I would present it. I know you have, I'm not saying it's, you know, I'm not trying, but, I, you know, on matters where, where I'm having a hard time understanding, I would guess maybe it just is a lack of information and um, maybe just a little better communication between us as well. So. Ed, let me ask you a question. I'm trying to read and understand yeah. this, the, the whole interest rate uh, basis. So is, is, it, is it a fixed rate or is it calculated on some sort of, I'm, I'm reading the language in the bond documentation. Let me see if I can find it in my... Written by an attorney, which... Right, a different series of bonds. So how does that work? Just generally speaking, you don't have to get into a lot of detail. I'm just trying to understand it. So. They structured the bond issue so that we have a... Um, level rate of bond repayment every year. Okay. So some of them are term bonds, some of them are serial bonds. I am not bond counsel mm here. -hmm. I'm doing my best to understand it. So um, so there are different interest rates depending on if you go further out. You know, so it's, it's really a variable rate. Let's say that the rate goes right. like in the 70s when I was uh, a young guy trying to buy a house. So the interest rate went to 21%. Mm -hmm. it, how's that going to impact you guys if, it, if the if the market goes, interest rates go up? Is it? How does that no, impact? No, they're the set. Situation? They're set, rates. but they're at different. But they're at different. Different rates. maturity dates. Right. Oh, yeah, I got gotcha, gotcha. So you did CDs. get a fixed rate. It's not a variable. Rate. Yeah, I believe so. But mm -hmm. it even right. I'm not <laughs> my final thing. It's a, it, it's a fixed rate, but it's different fixed rates over the period. Do you, what is that? Okay, Do you guys gotcha. know what that rate is? 
I'm trying to pull it up. Oh, so it's not in here. You want to borrow, you want to borrow my computer? That little yeah. screen, there's no way you can do it. We weren't really prepared for it. We were prepared any, to answer some stuff, but we weren't really. I, I didn't know what was going on today. No. And that's just, you I can know. Send it to you. I, well, again, I, yeah. I would have been prepared. No, I, mean, I know, if you knew. I'm just trying to get it in my head around. I think around. it was 3. 4. 7. That, uh, you know, it's just I mean, kind of the message it sends to us that we don't know what's going on. You need to, yeah. I'm, I'm more comfortable well, hearing that it's a, it's a fixed kind of a rate. It's yeah. just that they, they just staged it. It's not a variable rate that's going to fluctuate with the market because that could be a real problem. So I don't know why you're going to be thinking. Some of them have been Years. Yeah, have, have you ever done this yeah, before? Yeah, yeah. And then like in other counties, so. Ashtabula or wherever nope. we came from? Nope. So this is new. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, you go ahead. Then. And as with everything, I am. No, I'm more. Yeah. Seven. I have seven bosses that are telling me to do things. I get it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, a couple of other questions. Uh, I think some of us would be interested in knowing when or if any of these issues are callable and under what circumstances. And the other question is in. I, I find it objectionable that there's a bond closing on Thursday uh, when this really hasn't been vetted before the public and I think my suggestion would be that the, um, the final closing be postponed at least until all the technicalities and the information is, is made available. I'm not sure what you mean it hasn't been vetted by the, by the public. I, I think that the process that you're talking about is one that deserves to go be, in a public hearing before you actually go through with it, um, rather than to announce that the thing is closing on Thursday and that everybody is now under the gun to approve this because the closing is on Thursday. Bond closings can be postponed. There are bond closings all the time. And it would seem that it would be more appropriate and So I guess at what point would you want the public, you know, I think the you bonds went out to be issued mm -hmm. and we, we had the returns. I, I mean, I, I, I'm yes. not sure I, how I, that could be vetted. I think that you are acting in, I, I think that the, the, the horse has already left the barn and you are now coming back and trying to explain it. I think it would be better if when you got word initially that there was to be this procedure and eventually there would be a bond closing, I think it would have been more appropriate to make that a transparent issue if only two people from the public three people from the public like us showed up out of interest. At least you went through the motion of explaining it in public and dispelled any questions. Did you come to any, any of question. our library meetings? She came to a couple Did of them. Did you come to them? Yeah. yeah. Library meetings? Yeah. Uh, you we, were went a, we went to a lot of Well, I'm meetings. just saying when it was all to, explained to you yeah. originally, before the election. I'm not sure that it was actually explained in detail. a manner that... No, because we didn't have that detail. No, we were talking about pieces of pizza and the cost of the paper. The technicality <laughs> yeah. of the process is not explained. Yeah. And, and we both have some familiarity with bond issues and investing in those issues. And we've seen it happen with other public entities. And the disappointment here is that it does feel, as a taxpayer, and I've been quiet about this, but as a taxpayer, it strikes me as that it's, it's all coming after the, the, the fact, and it doesn't seem Again, it doesn't seem very organized. And I would suggest for your own comfort in the community, in case, God forbid, you have to do this again, you would know the <laughs> Not procedure. Not my lifetime. <laughs> you would know the procedure. Well, you've already got the experience, right? So, yeah. Yeah. At this point yeah. in time, you're, you're going to go yeah. and work to a right. veteran. Yeah. So, so there's two resolutions on the table. There's one to the litigation part, and then the second one is for us to approve the bond, I mean, we're not really approving the bond, we're just, just co-signing it. Well, yeah. Yeah. We're, we're just acknowledging that you guys are going exactly. to the bond. Right? Yeah. So we're not really approving anything, we're really we're just, just acknowledging, acknowledging right. it. Right. Okay, good. Do you want to go ahead and read the, uh, I'm sorry, I, I didn't want to. Here's the signature of the litigation and here's the actual bond. Okay. 
if, if you've been watching Berkshire schools right now, yeah, and see how much time and effort they've put into they have, that. They have done a great job marketing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, yeah I've looked at it. Yeah, awesome. I mean, yep. I was um, purposely trying to find places where I could poke holes in that just to test it. And really, they do have their ducks in a row. Yeah, they do. You know, okay. I mean, I am impressed. Yep. You know, really, they have all the bases covered. Yeah, they do I'm, a good job. I'm, yep. Again, I'm not... This is not personal. Please do not say or take what I'm saying to you as personal. I know it probably is hard not to because you've invested a lot of time and effort into it. But it does feel to me that there has been a disconnect, okay, as far as the message goes, that this has been very, a lot of rose-colored lenses is the way I would say, is the way it has felt has come to me. With huge, I mean, this is probably the biggest dollar amount, bigger, bigger than the safety center, Bigger than what we are even proposing for administrative offices to run this county day in and day out, and all the hundreds of employees that we have. Um, this is a big undertaking. This is a big task, and I just hope that this is not taken lightly. What it means, these type of dollars. I think it gets lost. $24 million, $52 million, like What's the difference? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, do you know what diverticulitis is? I do. I I have, I do. Oh, <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I have diverticulitis. I, I guess going forward so, with the yeah. with the yeah. horse has already left the barn, it's not too late to try and drill down and make the best of this going forward. Being forthright, like I've said, and trying to be as economical in these buildings and. Uh, spending those dollars exactly. the best you can, you know, but uh, it, it feels to me like I've, I've never heard of such a thing where you get a almost a blank check to go out and shape what you want to shape. I mean, that sounds, I wish somebody would give me that opportunity, you know, 24 million and just have at it and do whatever you can dream up, you know, it's, that's pretty, that's a lot of, a lot of weight on your shoulders. Okay. You know. So anyway, enough. I'm sorry. I, I apologize. I'm not, I'm not, again, it's not personal. It just, I, I, you know, there is some frustration, I feel, on my side a little bit. But, um, you know, we can move forward with business today. I don't know. Are, are we going to sign this thing today? Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. The Jack County Public <clears throat> Library is requesting the board approve and execute the signature and no litigation certificate of the county in connection with the $14 million library improvement bond series 2018A dated April 26, 2018. The Jack County Public Library is requesting the board approve and execute the Jack County Public Library improvement bond series 2018A in the amount of $14 million dated April 26, 2018. So, second. Mr. Yep. Mr. Yes. Mr. Blake. I just need to ask you one question. I'm going to go ahead and say yes on this, so that closes that off. Okay. Um, but um, so I, I, I don't want to necessarily hold you committed to it, but you got to. We I think that we've helped you guys. You got to help us in the sense where um, had a lengthy dis not a lengthy discussion, but the discussion was had. I know that um, you know that 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 library in Bainbridge has some issues. You know, as far as some some like. You know, building issues or um, structurally, structurally, is it okay or, or, is it or not? Well, it's after it's pumping a bunch of concrete, concrete footers, it became more structural. Okay, okay. So it's sufficient at least to be able to hold up for a little bit longer. But I guess my biggest question is this: is that, the, you know, we've got a growing, growing aging society. You know, we're all starting to get a little more gray hair, and 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 and. and, and uh, and, and you know the, the 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 big push is is that you know that population is continuing to grow. We're all getting getting up there, and and, and the dollars are going the the opposite way. But um, if there is a, if there is anything possible at all for us to be able to work with you guys to be able to do something, I don't think that there would be a more ideal scenario. In fairness to the residents of the county, the seniors of this county, and the people in that in that neck of the woods, 
that before you guys would consider to dem demo that building and, and give us an, at least an opportunity, you know, to pay you guys a dollar for it, to be able to take that over and, and, and utilize it potentially for our seniors as our senior center, I could only ask you please to give that consideration before you take the wrecking ball to that. Okay. You know, I, we'll take it under I, and I know that uh, I can't take credit for it. I know that uh, you know that, that Jessica actually had had, had, she spoke had with me brought right it up right. to you, mm -hmm. um, but please, I, she brought the idea up to us. We were you know absolutely you know it it, it, it it would probably be the most brilliant thing for a building to go in a direction to assist the residents of this county before it goes to rubble that we could think of, and obviously we would have to really you know talk to you guys, see what your positions are but as far as you know you guys have won let us all win sure and that's all I could really say okay I, I, um, so are you, you're talking about the knocking down that library is that mm -hmm. correct so are, aren't you gonna build right on top of it we're gonna no, build next. Adjacent, adjacent oh okay okay and keep it in operation until what would that building be oh, okay so you're just Right. Okay. Would be built. Okay. We would make the move. Yeah. And then that would just be a vacant lot then? It would be or? either, it depends on whether Maybe. it would be parking lot, it would be uh, some kind of the, the Bainbridge Women's Club. Garden, oh, the garden. Whatever okay. Happens well, I think I think that's, you know, that might be something to run by your board. Mm -hmm. Just, yeah. you know, that might be killing two birds with one stone. Instead of knocking it down, let's talk about maybe repurposing that building. And it, what a better place to be next to a library than the senior center. And really, that's a sorely, I mean, that is a perfect location, I think, for that area. I mean, I think the numbers will support one in that spot. So maybe run that up the flagpole over there and see what uh, see what they say. Okay. Okay? All right. Uh, thank you so Thank much. you, guys. No Sorry for the confusion. Yeah. And we'll see